Hey, 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 how's it going, do it yourselfers? Today, by popular demand, I'm gonna talk about yet another reliable car or a hidden gem that few people talk about on YouTube. Now, when I mention this car, some of you may click away and start running in the opposite direction because maybe you've had a poor experience with this car personally, or maybe you know someone else that has a bad, has had a bad experience with this car, but I want you to be a little bit more patient and pay attention to what I'm gonna be mentioning in this video because depending on the year of this make and model car, you, know, you, you may have had a really bad experience and think this is the worst car ever built, yet if you were to buy a little bit newer or a little bit older, older of the same make and model, you might think that, no, oh, this is the best car ever built, the most reliable car, best bang for your money, you know, this is the best used car you could possibly buy. So pay attention to this video all the way to the end. All right, so the car in question is none other than the Hyundai Elantra that you may have seen me talk about before on my channel. And it's obviously a Korean made vehicle, not a Japanese made vehicle, and no, not that Korea, this Korea. All right, so next, let's do a little quick history lesson of the Hyundai Elantras. We'll talk about the different generations, which generations had what problems, at what years they were fixed, what years are the most reliable, and all that good stuff. All right, so if I'm not mistaken, the second generation Hyundai Elantras, which were made from 1986 to the year 2000, was the first generation of Elantras available to the US market. And to be completely clear, these were horrible cars. These engines, transmissions, all the different components were really cheaply made. They were really unreliable and they're breaking down all the time. And so these cars were very expensive to maintain. And in fact, you know, they went away pretty quickly. I haven't seen one on the road, I wanna say for the last 10 years. All right, so next up is the third generation Elantras, which were made from the year 2001 to 2006. And this is where the story kind of starts and the whole journey begins. Now these cars had a 2.0 liter, four cylinder dual overhead cam engine, and they came with either a four speed automatic or a five speed manual. The engines on these cars made 135 horsepower and 132 pound feet of torque, and the curb weight on these cars was 2,635 pounds. All right, so the four cylinder on these cars was called the Beta 2 engine. Now this was an okay engine, but it had its own share of problems. Also keep in mind, it obviously didn't make a whole lot of horsepower. However, in 2004, they introduced the continuous variable valve timing system on these cars that helped, helped it improve on the gas mileage and also make it a little bit more horsepower and torque. All right, now let's get on to the nitty gritty of these engines. So for starters, just to let you know, these engines are an interference engine and they do come with a timing belt that you may have seen me replace if you've been a subscriber to my channel for more than five or six years. Uh, and that basically means that if you don't replace the timing belt on time and it breaks, your valve will hit your pistons causing catastrophic engine failure or in other words, leaving you in need of a new engine. Now, as far as common problems and issues on these cars, for starters, there was a head gasket issues, especially on the earlier years on, the, on these uh, third generation Elantras. Now again, you may have seen me replace these head gasket issues and I'm sure there is footage of that on the screen right now. But anyway, some people claim that it was due to a poorly designed cooling system on these cars, which I do not believe was the case. Others claim that it was, you know, bad uh, thermostat, water pump, whatever the reason. In my experience, if you took care of these cars and maintained the cooling system on time, replaced the water pump, you know, the thermostat, check the radiator, on, radiator and all that, you were very unlikely to develop head gasket issues. And I did have a personal experience with one of these third generation Elantras. It was a 2001 Elantra that I bought for a family member. It had 128,000 miles when we bought it. We bought it for 2,500 $2, bucks. I replaced the timing belt, water pump, thermostat, you know, flushed the cooling system. And that car never had head gasket issues and it got up to all the way up to 228,000 miles where we sold it for 800 bucks. Now, as far as the cost goes for maintaining the timing belt and the water pump, it shouldn't be that high because, you know, it's a small four cylinder engine. The timing belt, the water pump is, are fairly accessible. So you're not gonna be paying a whole lot of money for the labor it takes to replace this. So, you know, it is a cost, so you wanna take that into consideration, but it's not gonna, you know, cost you an arm and a leg. All right, another common problem with these third generations was the input and output sensors on the transmission would go bad you know, causing uh, what seemed like, you know, transmission kicking into gear. Now, if you were to take that to an unexperienced mechanic, you might, you know, throw out there that, you know, your transmission is bad. All the while, it was simply the sensors that needed to be replaced. Again, these sensors were also easily accessible and they didn't cost much. You just needed a competent mechanic to be able to properly diagnose, properly <laughs> install the sensors. Oh, so many cars ended up in the junkyard back in the days because people simply didn't know how to properly diagnose. Other common problems were, you know, lifter noise during cold start, 
due to poor oil circulation, you know, your knock sensor is going bad, your EVAP perch solenoid going bad. And another personal problem that we experienced a couple of times uh, with the Elantra that I mentioned was that the radiator support was pretty weak. Every time you hit a little bump, that support would cause the radiator to crack and then you would have to replace the radiator. All right, next up was the fourth generation Elantras that I'm gonna be recommending. However, not all of the years of these fourth generation Elantras, so keep paying attention. These were made from 2007 to 2010. They had the same 2.0 liter Beta 2 engine, and again, you had options for the four speed automatic or a five speed manual transmission. Now these fourth generation 2.0 liter Beta 2 engines did not have any or very few of the issues that the 2.0 liter Beta 2 engines of the third generation Elantras. They did not suffer from uh, bad head gaskets, near, nowhere near the same rate. They did not have lifter noise. However, they were still driven by the same timing belt and obviously again, were the interference engine. They were pretty much the same engine, just made better, more perfect, more reliable. And the automatic transmissions on these were also more reliable. They did not suffer at the same rate of failure on the input and output the speed sensors. And overall, these were much more reliable than the third generation Elantras. And this is gonna be a, you know, a repeating theme that you see here. You know, every, gen every manufacturer will start off with an engine and you know, perfect it and put that on different generation, you know, put a facelift on the next generation of their cars. However, they keep that engine and they keep on improving upon that engine and making it more reliable. However, the problem is they get to a point where that engine, you know, new technology comes in and they need to make that engine more efficient. They simply scrap that, go to a new engine design in order to be able to, you know, have a more efficient engine that gets better gas mileage for that car. And that's what happened to the next generation of Elantras that which were made from 2011 to 2015. Those engines were a 1.8 liter engine and they came with a timing chain. Again, still obviously an interference engine, but the timing chain doesn't have to be replaced at a certain interval. It usually, or it's supposed to last the entire life of the engine. And that's where kind of the problem is from 2011 to 2013, a ticking noise developed in these engines that sometimes led to uh, the crankshaft bearing going bad. And when that goes bad, it, things really go bad. As in, you lose your engine completely and you have to get a new engine. But back to the fourth generation Elantras and to be completely specific, they were made from 2007 to 2010, but I only recommend 2007 through 2009. So 2007, 2008, 2009, because the 2010 models had problems with their transmissions. I don't know, for whatever reason, maybe there was a, they changed the supplier for a component of the transmission for the year 2010. And uh, you know, that wasn't very reliable. That's why transmissions are having more problems in 2010. But whatever the reason, if you're buying an Elantra, buy from 2007 to 2009. Looking at the Craigslist for my area, I can find, I can find these for less than 4,000, 4,000 bucks for with, you know, 100, 220, 30,000 miles on it. So yeah, I don't like to make blanket statements like, you know, saying, oh, all Elantras are great or all Elantras are bad, Toyotas are good, Hondas are good, you know, German cars are horrible. You know, each car, if, if things were that black and white, you only see one make and model on the road, you know? Things are not that black and white, so you need to pay attention to, to this channel, really. <laughs> because yeah, like we talked about a week ago, there's even a really reliable American car. If you missed that video or not subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification. And here's a link to that video. And this corner, you can check it out. Link below it here. Links also down in the description box as well. All right, leave comments, suggestions, and questions down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.